Castellos is dead. Pamphlets spread around Canor and Divin Hall like wildfire. The claims printed there more inflammatory than the hottest embers. Castellos, the ruling god of the regent court, is dead. Published by the Order of Chroniclers, the printings detail murals located in an ancient precursor ruin containing vast carvings depicting the whole course of precursor civilization. The last of these murals appears to have been made after the ruin of Aelantir and depicts a deity named Castellar, known to Canorians as Castellos, trying and failing to prevent the calamity. Copies of the mural are printed on the back of every pamphlet so that all can see the sky god's end, and the Telemite town criers shout the words from the rooftops. Castellos is dead. In addition to the rapidly spreading pamphlets, a radical group of apprentice majors within the Magisterium became convinced of the Chronicler's claims and hatched a plot to seize the Tower of Adrail and use its magic amplifying properties in the location in the middle of the Dame's Head to project the image of the mural on the clouds for all to see. Just a few days ago, the image of Castellar faltering before the devastation of the ruin of Aelantir appeared in the evening sky, the flickering of the mural form against the clouds almost giving the illusion of the lightning shearing away Castellar's outstretched hand. The plotters were quickly apprehended and expelled by the Magisterium, but there is no undoing what they did, no way for the population of the Imperial States to unsee the image cast upon the clouds. The shock and anger at the Chronicler's revelation has reverberated throughout Halkan, with many claiming the Chroniclers are lying and demanding action against them, while others defend the Chronicler's impeccable record as being beyond reproach. Still others clamour for answers from their religious leaders, most of whom are just as shocked as their congregations. The various clerics of the Pantheon offer different answers as they write a flurry of letters back and forth, and the High Priests attempt to calm the situation. All the while, the question of the accuracy of the Chronicler's report hangs in the clergy's heads. For if they are correct, then for all these years the Regent Court has been led by a dead god. Hmm. Lose two stuff. Fuck you. Game! I didn't want to lose the stability, you bastard. I'm just waiting until I can f turn to Coronite. I have, I have been... Um, deifying Corrin like the entire game, so I feel like it makes sense. Something I would love to do at one point is play a D and D game within the world of Anvenar. I think that could be really fun. I don't know what date you'd set it, because like fourteen, like th there's a couple of really good options, right? You could do it just before this game starts, because then you've got the um, the green tide going on, you've got the, um, the lilac wars going on, so your party could be involved in either one of those, um, maybe even both, uh, but then if you wait a while, then you've got, you know, Estil forming and trying to foil the plot of Verena to become a lich, um, you've got things like Corvuria expanding into the, you know, the marshes here, and maybe you need to help them with that. There's a whole deal about the elves fighting against the gnolls, uh, or, you know, killing the, the, the goblins and stuff, or maybe the, you know, uh, Karashar's becoming a thing, and the orcs are coming in to fight the elves to liberate the humans, or, like, there's so many different things, but you've really got to decide what period you want it to be. Um... Because, like, there's, there's hundreds of years between each. Or decades, I guess. Would be more reasonable to say. I would say that this is one of the best, if not the best mod for Eve War. I would say it is the best mod. I am not happy with absolutely everything in the mod, right? Not gonna, not gonna claim that whatsoever. I really like um, population. Um, I think this mod would be fantastic if it had a population... Uh, mod instead of development. I really don't like the the, especially with the dwarves, the the crutch that is development in in quite a lot of what they do. But I don't think it would work with a mayo and taxes level um, development system. Something like a common universalist population system maybe would work really well. But I th I do think still that this is by far the most flavorful mod. I mean, I don't think it's arguable. Even if you don't like the flavor in Anbana, if you don't like the the story, the background, any of that, even if you don't like any of that, it's still inarguably the most flavorful mod. 
And I think that's dope. Uh, you're running a D&D game yourself. Oh, that's cool. Uh, starting in 1444 with the players in Castanor, you're introducing some of your own stuff with a magical sword attuned to humans. Very cool. Many questions have risen. Oh, is it, this is my ally as well. With a recent revelation that Castlos, the ruling deity of the Regent Court, is dead. When exactly did he die? Can the text in Aelantir be verified? Who will lead the Regent Court now? Traditionalists attempt to keep the peace and say that Adian, Castellus' son and rightful heir, will rise up and take his father's place. However, many of those who suffered under the Green Tide claim that it was the Regent Court's neglect that led to the destruction of Iskan and Castalia, and a clear sign that if Castellos was alive and the gods were capable, that the Green Tide would have been averted, and that Castellos would have protected his patron kingdom like he did in Eon's past. The rising popularity of the recently ascended God of War Corrin, the heroine of the Green Tide, has called for her divine succession onto the Regent Throne through her links as the de facto successor of Agridos, Castellos' deceased brother. The Coronites in Arden Keep dispute that while Adian might be a noble and chivalric god, his time under Castellus's tutelage has made him conservative, hidebound, and ultimately unable to defend the realm against its many external threats, and that it, uh, the present system of divine regency is but a poor excuse for weak and unjust rulers to retain their power and ignore the monsters and tyrants lurking beyond their borders. Coronite enabled, Old Haven changes to Coronite. Where is Old Haven? Are you are you in the possession of Old Haven? There it is. So you've got a center of reformation. You've already turned Coronite. I think that's just what happens for you. If I turn Coronite, do I get a center of reformation as well? Yes. Fucking beautiful. Got one right here. So, like, three centers of reformation for Coronite in Escan sounds pretty dope. Finally managed to convert the Heretics of Sapphire Watch. My Coronite Paragon Hood when has gone down. When it goes all the way down, we get Unrest goes down, Depagor Reputation goes up, Shock Damage goes up, and Permanent CB against all na uh, neighbors, and Manpower pay, uh, in True Faith Provinces. When it's super high, you get construction cost production efficiency, but unrest goes up. Like all, like either way, this is good. Like either side is good, and we keep the morale of armies and land later shock as well, which is kind of dope. If I attack Corintar directly, yeah, screw it. I forgot to call in my allies. Why did I start the war against Corintar? They're the easiest one to force out. They're already full sieged, basically. Don't really want to get next to Grombar, even though they're having a bit of an issue. The current war with the stairs triggered a round of intrigues in the Astili court. On one hand, Corrin of Colwood, or his memory court mage, has offered to draw information from his network of contacts in a stair. A considerable network, he claims, including several contacts close to the Petty King, to aid the war effort. On the other hand, his political opponents have raised doubts about his loyalty. They argue that in spite of his previously exemplary service, we simply cannot trust in his Mari to participate in the deliberations of a national importance at this time. They therefore demand that he be banished from the court. Um, no, we, we like him. Please don't betray my trust. Also, lift fog of war, like, I don't fucking care. There is no fog of war. Actually, there is. Never mind. Please lift the fog of war. I, I just don't want to lose my uh, old power cost guy. Corin himself. Herself. Itself. Corin. Like, you can't, you can't betray me. We're Corinite. Fuck. Corin of Colwood has betrayed us. Despite the watchful eyes of his enemies, he was able to slip across the border with copies of important documents pertaining to our war plans. You bastard. Actual scum. So from you, I think this is all I really want, right? Just those three provinces? Yeah. And all of your money, naturally. And war reps, naturally. And I'll pillage your capital because I'm an asshole. I need all of their land. That's a coalition. Womenheart doesn't matter, Astaire doesn't matter, so Covenblad and Bladebreaker doesn't matter. I 
With the conquest of the Northern Wall, we've secured our country's border against the ever-growing threats to the Western North, the foul Northern Orcs and the squabbling forces of old Canor. Get the trade power and more trade power. Lovely. Uh, negative 79 Paragon Hood. It's, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we get um, permanent CBs against neighboring heretics and heathens, so that's, that's pretty dope. Coronite Lich Witch King seems like a bit of an RP fail. I don't know. I feel like it should be like no religion at this point. Or as soon as you become a lich, you like your religion should be... I don't, I don't know, because it's not technically necessarily the religion of your ruler. It's like the religion of the people. Although she is Coronite, so... Meh. With the hard work of our diplomats, we've toiled day and night, and our reputation has improved. Our reputation, guys! Our reputation, can I just point out? Our reputation has improved. Glory to us. That's made such a dent. <laughs> if you liked the video, please help me out and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Maybe leave a comment down below too, it really does help out the channel. If you have the means and are willing to, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. It's the best way to support me and the effort that goes into creating the content you've just watched and hopefully will continue to watch, and allows me to focus more on making videos without the stress and worry of another meteor striking my channel, be it hacks, demonetization, or the third adpocalypse. You can also support me by heading over to Twitch and following there, or joining my Discord and being an active member of the community. All those links are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.